Hello, yes, the new ambassadors for British nationalism, part two. There's several reasons why I've done a part two. Number one is uh, the response I've received uh, from the last two videos has been very, very encouraging. So I thought I'd do another one. Also, there were other matters and issues I didn't cover in the other two. One being... Should those new ambassadors for British nationalism decide to go on to further education university, you need to drop out of all politics. Get your grades first, get your education first, finish uni, because you'll achieve nothing on the campus spreading the word of British nationalism. You'll be hounded and your education will just suffer like it did with the likes of Nick Griffin, Nick Wakeling. There was many uh, whose education it was just uh, it was just messed up and they didn't leave university with the grades they should have done but anyway so opt out of politics till you've got your grades till you've left university and then you decide what you're going to do in the big world out there also those new ambassadors for british nationalism those that will be gifted and i'm sure they're out there the gifted ambassadors for british nationalism right if you're gifted in acting track and field, boxing, football, and you can make a career out of it and become financially secure as well as a following, then live your dream first. You will be beneficial to British nationalism further down the road. Also, I can't emphasize enough to stay away from the crackpot, lunatic screwball groups out there. Some will be set up by loonies, Others will be set up by the states. Either way, they're detrimental to our cause and what we believe in. And also, they're bad for you. They will tarnish you with right-hand salutes, violence, dangerous people with dangerous ideas. You must, you must stay away from them. No matter how alluring they may be when there's 40,000 marching on the streets and you think, right, this is it, I'm getting involved. Don't. Let me just put this to you. I was thinking about this before. The Conservatives, the Tories, they don't have a big street movement, do they? But they're in power. Labour has a massive, massive street movement, second to none. They're not in power. To reach our people's hearts and minds, we have to go to the doorstep. We have to talk to them on the high street, right? And we have to listen to what they have to say. We have to listen to them, that's right. We've got to listen. And then we can offer our solution to the problems issues and tragedies our people are facing in 2018 and uh, further on in the future no doubt so all that street movement i believe is a thing of the past it worked in the 70s with the once mighty national front with a forest of union jacks and thousands thousands of men and women marching behind them the first uh, march i went on uh, in london for the once mighty national front was the Anti-Boat People March, I think it was, 1978, 79. I'm not quite sure now. Uh, but anyway, the hairs on the back of my head were standing up. It was it was just awesome. It, I'd never felt such... I don't know, it was exhilarating. It was really, really... Um, they were the times, trust me. Nick Griffin, Richard Edmonds, they'll be testament to that. It was... They were amazing, amazing times. Their marches were fantastic, but they're gone now. That that was a different era, a different people, population, a different mindset to what we have now. There is social media. Social media can be our friend, but it can also be our enemy. Because with the click of a mouse, it can mobilise all the angry heads onto the street, which is demonizing and criminalizing our cause then in the same breath with the click of a mouse it can spread a message i understand that facebook does have good um good uses but also has bad uses as well social media should be backed up with electoral uh campaigns victory strategies whatever right not to mobilize the hangry edge and like i've said the conservatives haven't got a street movement and they're in power Labour have got a massive one and they're not. So that's food for thought, that. So the new ambassadors for British nationalism, I know you're out there. Just heed my words, my good advice from 40 odd years of experience in British nationalism, being involved in our cause. I've learned an awful lot, an immense uh, amount of information uh, about how we should now approach this 2018. 
how we approached it in the 80s and the 70s is totally different to how we approach it now. And like I've said, stay away from crackpot outfits that are just going to demonize you. We need squeaky clean, good, wholesome people, right, to lead British nationalism into the future. And also as well, this is something else I was thinking of, that we should have done decades ago. Those in British nationalism, those new ambassadors for British nationalism, that don't really want to be in the public domain. You need to get a career in the media or journalism, right? That's what you need to be, a journalist or working in the media. We need people in there, right? That's where you need to get. If you don't want to put yourself on offer, then that's where you should be heading for. The media, journalism. And maybe some other institutions we can all think of. I'm sure we can. They're just two. We've missed out big time when these opportunities were there for us decades ago. And we've, we've just bypassed them for some strange reason. So there's some just more advice from a guy that's been around a long time. And I'm a learner, me. I'm a quick learner. I understand what's happening now in 2018. Sadly, some veteran nationalists are still pushing the nonsense, maybe they're doing it for financial reasons, maybe they see there's money in the angry heads and the, the madness and the lunacy and the stupidness that has now become our movement, maybe they do, I don't know, right, but trust me, the way forward is that winning the hearts and minds of our people on the doorstep, in the shopping mall, shopping centre, on the high street, talking to them. Not going there announced on Facebook, but all meeting in such and such a place, such and such a corner, and the other lot, the left turn up. I'm all about just going there and talking to people. And if things get a bit shitty, then you leave. Confrontation is the last thing we need. What we need to do is reach the hearts and minds of our people. Our people are not the same people of the 1970s, let alone those poor buggers that went over the top at the Somme. Right, we're totally a different type of people now. So we've got to approach this right and clever and tactful, right? That's what we have to be. We have to, we've got to uh, rid ourselves of the belief that the bigger the march is, the bigger the mob on the streets is and all that crap, the public will, you know, will win the public over. That's not the case now. In fact, far from it. A mob on the streets is a scary presence to the vast majority of people shouting and singing and chanting. And especially if there's another mob hell-bent on trouble, it just aggravates to the situation and um, it just makes it look bad, right? And our enemies are fully aware of this and that's why they like it. They like you going on the street because they can keep the pantomime and circus going. Okay, thank you.